Who would like to read this? I haven't heard from uh, many of you. Who would like to read from? Yes, ready. A researcher wishes to estimate the proportion of adults who have high-speed internet access. What size sample should be obtained if she wishes to estimate her wishes the estimate to be within 0 0.01 with 95% confidence? She uses the prior P hat, that's part A, as I just mentioned. And part B, there is no prior estimate, which have to, we have to use 0.5. Good, excellent. So for part A, we're asked to find N. And for part B, the same thing. And remember how we got to this. So since it's 95%, I'm going to use the same alpha. But now the margin of error is 0.01. So this is 1.96 divided by the margin of error, n squared. And now we multiply by p hat and 1 minus p hat. So multiply by 0.56. And I'll write it here, 1 minus 0.56, which is 0.44. So we'll calculate this. I'm going to share my screen. Share. OK. Good. So we have the same thing. 1.96. And we divide by 0 0.01. And we square. And we multiply again by 0.56. And times um, the complement. Right, so this has to be equal one. Good, and end. Answer. Yes. Uh, it's nine four six five point seven zero two. Right, so I have to move it up to six. So I will have to repeat the process when we do not have an estimate. So these two are equal. Point five, point five. So put a zero and five zero. So 9, so part B, 9604. Thank you very much. So N, 9466, six, right? 9466. Six. And the other one, uh, 960. Nine, six, oh, yep. Yep. 9604. Any questions? Any questions? So this is the same. Let's see the next one. Yeah, let's take a look at this one. Who would like I'll to? Read it. Yes, I'm ready. A group conducted a poll of 2023 likely voters just prior to an election. The results of the survey indicated that candidate A would receive 47% of the popular vote and candidate B would receive 45% of the popular vote. The margin of error was reported to be 2%. The group reported that the race was too close to call. Use the concept of a confidence interval to explain what this means. Okay. Perfect. So let's talk about this. So the first one the first estimate for the for one candidate should be p1 hat plus i'm sorry plus or minus the margin of error but i wanted to write it as an interval so uh, 0.47 minus 0.02 because this is 0.02 and 0.47 plus 0.02 so this is for the first one so p1 the P1, population 1, has this point estimate and has this interval estimate. Now, 47 minus 2, 47 minus 2 is 0.45. 47 plus 2 is 0.49. So this is the confidence interval for the first candidate. For the population, for the second candidate, what do we get? So we have the same thing, but this time is 0.45 minus 2% and 0.45 
plus 2%. So this is 0.43 and 0.47. So before we finish this, I want to ask you a quick question. And then I'll come back. Here's my question. If I show you, if I give you two intervals, the interval 1, 10, and the next interval is 12, 22. Which of these two, I know it's a silly question, but which of these two is definitely at all times bigger than the other? I don't hear anything. I don't really understand the question. Very good. So let's say uh, today you have between one and ten dollars in your pocket. And tomorrow you have between twelve dollars and twenty two dollars in your pocket. Would it be the twelve to twenty two? Right. So this is consistently consistently higher. So the next day you definitely have more, 100% more than what you had here. Now here's my second example. Today you have between one and ten dollars in your pocket, but tomorrow you have between seven and forty. Is this consistently always higher than this? Yeah. No. Because they overlap. Right? So here I have between 1 and 10, but here I have between 7 and, and 40. So 7 and 10 as an interval, they're overlapping. One of them on the real line, one of them is this, and the other one is this between 7 and 40. They overlap. So I cannot say that this is consistently higher than the previous one. So I won. That's the idea here. Which of these two is consistently higher? 100% at all times higher. Because if it is, then we can call that candidate as the winner. But if they overlap, we cannot draw a conclusion. We don't know the results yet. So, as you see, the two numbers, so this is 0.43 and this is 0.47. So this is this one, candidate 2 in green and candidate 1 in orange. So this is 0.47 and 0.49. So this is candidate two, oh, candidate one. So one is in orange and two is in green. Which one is consistently higher than the other so we can call the winner? One. Consistently at all times forever higher than the other. There's overlap in them? There is overlap. We cannot draw a conclusion. We cannot call the winner. I can call the winner here. Look, 12 to 22, 100% consistently higher than here. But here I cannot call a winner because there is an overlap. So then, since the poll results do not show that one of the candidates has more than 50%, that's not the case. Since the difference between the percentages of the popular vote for the candidates is less than, no. The margin of error suggests candidate A may receive between 45, yes, and 49, yes, and candidate B may receive between 43, yes, and 47, yes. That's exactly our numbers that we have here. Because the poll estimates overlap when accounting for margin of error, the poll cannot predict the winner at this point. Since the estimated proportions depend on the level of confidence, no, no. Well, they are all, they're both determined in the same way.
okay? So you cannot say that you consistently have more money today than yesterday. You cannot. Because this one is 1 to 10 and this one is 7 to 40. But here you can say, oh, absolutely. Initially I had between 1 and 10, but now I have between 12 and 22. This is my winner. But here you cannot say which one. 